we all know the stereotype of the televangelist asking poor people to give till it hurts as a proof of their faith. And we also all know about the leaky roof costing thousands of pounds to mend. And why should we bother to do that? What purpose does it serve? And all the gilded stuff and the gold and silver and all that that, that people generally understand to be in churches. Okay. Now, it's also argued, of course, that churches shouldn't have charitable status because they're a waste of money. So, I suppose my first question about that is, what do you think a church is? Is it a building or the people? Now, suppose it is the building. If it is the building, then that building acts as a sort of advertisement for the faith, for the religion. And so it actually stands and falls on whether that religion is actually worth pursuing, whether it actually contributes to society or not. And obviously I'm going to take this from a secular perspective here because I don't expect to take people um, who are themselves non-religious into this direction. So I'm actually talking to non-religious people here really. Okay, so it's an advert. There's a lot of expensive advertising around. Um, it's not generally considered to be particularly a waste of money, although in some ways it clearly is. And But a church is also more than just an advertisement for the religion. It's also a facility for the community. If you're going to a funeral or a wedding, your wedding, your funeral, or even a baptism, you know, if you believe in infant baptism, which personally I don't, you are expecting your day to be good. People spend a lot of money on weddings. <clears throat> uh, they want to give people a good send off and have a good celebration of their lives when they lose people. And that's not a problem. That's what churches can do. And in order to do that, churches need to have a lot of money spent on them. People use them for rites of passage and that's how we tend to express them. But these buildings are also facilities for the community, for social groups and so forth. For example, our church hall is used as an annex by the local community college. But looking beyond the physical building, I want to talk about various different scenarios. One of which is church as a social asset. Churches provide shelter and food for the poor and homeless. They provide um, help for asylum seekers, refugees, victims of domestic violence. They provide counselling and therapy for bereavement, for relationships, and they campaign on development issues in the third world. They do all of that sort of thing. They provide parent and toddler groups. All of these are assets to the community. Now, there are other bodies and facilities that do this, but a church has an unusually broad remit. And um, another thing about that is it's supported by the work of the people, which is given without payment often, or if it is paid, the money has often been given voluntarily. It's not the same as tax. You don't have to pull the money out of people's unwilling, grasped hands to do that. And I think that is a good thing. Also, suppose it does none of these things. Suppose we're talking about a purely sort of stereotypically evangelical Pentecostal church which makes no contribution to the social good as people normally see it. In that case, what's it doing? Well, I think it's providing uh, work for the economy through things like lighting, heating, alarms, buildings and so forth. It's providing work for the economy in that way. Money goes back into the economy. It doesn't just disappear into the church. Um, and also, just on the question of mental health, um, basically people with a frank psychosis are normally easily spotted by people in the congregation um, and given help. And this is another thing, it's actually good for people's mental health, even if it's a purely evangelical church that makes non con no contribution, as far as anyone can see, to society. Now, I used to be in a very liberal church with progressive values, most of all, most of all of whose members are agnostic or atheist. It was a great place, but also really tiny, and as a result, it could do hardly anything. When people get together in groups, we tend to acquire irrational beliefs. I've seen that happen in pressure groups, political parties, charities and so forth that I've been involved in. If we get it together in groups to do good, we will acquire irrational beliefs. And in this case, this is a, a group that has got together to do good that's lasted about 2,000 years. Now, obviously, I don't think I've done that because that's how cognitive dissonance works. But the fact of life that is that irrational beliefs occur and they're not confined to religious institutions. So I firmly believe that churches are a force for good in the community and that this would be the case even if we Christians were completely wrong. I know Paul says something else. We can easily cite extreme cases, but those are not representative. There's a big lump in the middle, which is more real and more representative. And those extreme cases are important, but they don't form the only part of sensible arguments.